Well, the director of that documentary was John Dower, and he's with me now here in the News Hour studio. Um, John, was it Frazier's fate always to be referred to in the same breath as Muhammad Ali? Yeah, I think it's um, inescapable. I think they defined each other, mainly because they brought the best out of each other. I mean, some sporting contests, that just happens. They were de very different fighters. Um, but I think also because of what you heard there, the way, which is one of the reasons why we made our film, the, the way that Ali treated Joe was... Um, it was kind of disgusting in many ways. Um, was it real or was it showbiz? I think it was real. I think it started off as showbiz but became real. And I think part of the problem was that Muhammad Ali was being manipulated by a, an organisation called the Nation of Islam. I mean, you know, looking back, you know, history is often airbrushed, particularly by the winners. But, you know, people have Muhammad Ali... And don't get me wrong, I think Ali did extraordinary things um, for the black people of America and what he represented. But looking back, people see him as standing shoulder to shoulder with Martin Luther King. He didn't. He was part of an organisation that believed all white men were devils and in spaceships and that they... And he exploited that kind of um, black pride and took it out on on what was originally his brother, he referred to, a very good friend of his, Joe Frazier. Let's talk then about Frazier in his own right. Was he, in his own right, a really great boxer? Yeah, I mean, he... I mean, I still... I, I can't quite believe it, hearing it this morning. Uh, Joe was one of those... You just imagined him going on forever. He was indestructible, you know, not just in the ring, but outside of the ring. He actually had most of his injuries after boxing, and you know, including, you know, running over his foot and losing a toe with his lawnmower. And, but he was just indestructible, and he was like a man that was hewn out of rock. I mean, he had that stature. And in the ring, he was shorter. He didn't dance like Ali, but he had a left hook that was... It was, it was pulverising. You must have got to know him pretty well while you were making the film. Was he a nice guy? Uh, we all fell in love with Joe. My only one regret about the film is that I couldn't show those moments with Joe where he was being Joe. Because our film was about his three fights with Ali and that was a very hungry story and, and the, the, the politics and the furore that went round it. But Joe was... I'll never forget the first time I met him. I'd been in um, Philadelphia for a few days, kept trying to meet him, researching this film, and I kept missing him, and he was very elusive. Joe is very elusive. He likes to be out and partying. And I finally got to meet him after a couple of weeks, and he, he came out of the back of his gym where he was living, you know, absolutely resplendent, always very well-dressed, very rock and roll, looked like a black Keith Richards, and he just looked me in the eye and said, where you been? And I said, well, Joe, you know, I started bumbling. I said, Joe, I've been here. The Where have you been? I've been trying to get hold of you for the last couple of weeks. And he said, where you been, boy? He said, I've been here since 1963. And and that was the case. He's a He was a very proud man. And he wanted, he felt like his story hadn't been properly told. But he was, he was great company to be. I mean, he would never stop singing. You couldn't shut him up singing. You know, he, you know, he was still chasing the girls, I'm sure, you know, even a, f a few weeks ago. He was a... He was a, he was he was one of those kind of true stand-up guys, a, a real American hero. Did he spend much of his later life harboring a grudge against Muhammad Ali? I don't think this was something he you know he didn't nurse a grudge on a daily basis. He wouldn't sit there muttering about you know that that Ali, but it was always there. And I don't think because he was quite nasty about Ali sometimes. Yeah, I mean he? some of the things when Ali became ill. There was a moment in our film where his brother played his answer phone message on Joe's phone, which basically you know paraphrased as you know look and see. Look at Ali. I did that and because he, Ali came to suffer from Parkinson's disease. Yes, and and you know there were times where Joe said, "I did that," and yeah, he he. I don't think he ever really forgave Ali. And you know what? Some people, including myself, would argue, "Well, why should he?" I mean, people people have grudges for a lot less, and everyone these days want the nice Hollywood ending. But you know, Ali said some pretty awful things about him. He must have made a lot of money in his heyday. Did he live a good life? Well, you may be surprised, but there are some slightly, you know, inscrutable, slightly dodgy people in boxing, and I'm afraid Never Joe... Never <laughs> Joe sadly lost, 
lost a lot of his money through bad business deals, land deals. But do you know what? Joe is one of those characters that even if he had all of his money still, I think he'd still be living in that room above his boxing gym in North Philadelphia. And I think that's why it hurt so much what Ali said, because Joe was very proud of being a black guy in that community. And he felt, well, Joe, uh, Muhammad Ali belittled that. John Dahl, thanks so much for your memories of Joe Frazier.